Good evening, YouTube. This is Talking Crazy 88. Back again with another episode for you. Decided to continue on Chapter 6 of The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman by Shaharazad Ali. Chapter 6 Communications. Today's black woman is forever complaining and demanding that the black man communicate with her. By this, she means she wants the black man to talk to her and tell her what's on his mind. Despite the fact that whenever he attempts to communicate his ideas to her, she responds in the wrong way. The burden of the black woman's complaint rests on the premise that he does not like or, or accept the way she talks to him. If she comes at him wrong, all systems shut down and he does not talk to her at all. At least not in the open form type of discussion that she wants. The black man is very vulnerable when he confides in his woman. To do so, he takes a step into what he already knows is a dangerous arena because the black woman is known to take information he gives her and use it against him at another time. She refers to him as unresponsive and insensitive when he will not answer certain questions about his personal feel feelings or views. The black woman gets very annoyed when the black man refuses to let her inside his brain. The complexity of his views often do more to anger her and harm the relationship than they do to promote open communica communicative unity. The black woman wants the black man to talk, but, his, but if his talk is different from hers, she has a problem. If the black man is silent and unrevealing about his innermost thoughts, the black woman becomes suspicious and displays a generalized uneasiness. She can't block his idea if she doesn't know it. She doesn't realize it because of her strident attitude and unpredictable reactions that the black man declines confiding, in, confiding his dreams in her. The black woman has emotionally di dispossessed the black man. He has lost the sure-footedness he was created with. Therefore, the often illuminating revelations he arrives at are much too precious for the black woman's cynical ears. The more the black woman fusses and complains, the quieter the black man may become. The black woman is accustomed to speaking to and about the black man in a negative and disparaging tone. She may even speak to strange unknown men in a more civil tone. The harshness of her tone of voice, the shrill grating of impatience, her cadence and inflections speak loudly of her disrespect. She sometimes appeared to to glare at the black man as if she is on the brink of physically attacking him. She interrupts his explanations with more badgering and her disregard for his ideas is so ingrained in her psyche such as to be pathoscopic to her nature. When she is really angry with him, she will stand toe to toe, feet apart, hands on her hips, as if daring him to say another word. She can fuss for hours, bickering, sneering, cursing, and competing to drive her point home with the highest extreme of emotionalism. She ob ob absolutely demands to have the last word. She not only uses the sounds of disrespect to her own man, but will use the same in intonations when angry with any black man. 
her son, her neighbors, her father, her boss, or co-workers, her brothers, or others. She can become so vicious sounding that sometimes it resembles a savage or animal barking. In her anger, she will throw things, stamp her feet, slam doors, snatch herself around, and sometimes go into neutral. Her non-acceptable ways of displaying her anger are deeply rooted in her suspicions. Whenever she catches the black man in what she deems as a wrongdoing, she uses that opportunity to vent all of her current frustrations. She harbors grudges. The black man may start out arguing with the black woman about one point, and in the middle of the fracas, she throws in a few other topics. And by the end of the argument, he may find himself debating an entirely different issue. She keeps a mental file on issues she is in disagreement with. She maintains about 9,000 kilobytes of negative information, and when she decides the right time, she, she springs them on her man. The black woman is not known to practice respectful communication skills with the black man. Excuse me. The black woman is not known to practice respectful communication skills with the black man anyway. She simply does not know how to talk to him. Oh, yes. She is a great conversationalist when discussing other subjects. But when trying to have a necessary one-on-one -on -one conversation with her man about a disagreement, a choice, an action of a fear, she has a complete breakdown of interpretation of this English wet language. She can't, dis she can't distinguish between a soft, comforting voice and scorn and contempt. She blows her top loud and wrong. If she would present her ideas calmly and unemotionally, the black man can deal with them. And he does. But since she is so irrational about being right, she does not focus very well on one point, and her thoughts are scattered and unfocused because she is trying to argue about everything at once. If the black woman does not learn to excuse me if the black woman does not learn how to respectfully talk to the black man there is little chance she will ever really get to know him nor of them coming together in harmony Some black women talk all the time about everything and and excuse me about everything about everybody and usually in a critical and gossipy, gossipy way. Black men do not like to hear gossip. It is too base for him to deal with. The black man will relate a story to his woman in, a, in pure confidence and later find to his dismay she has told all of her friends and it's public knowledge. Or she will make up a story and tell her man about it and pretend that an incident happened to someone else just to see how he would react to it. She tries out a lot of her own ideas on the black man. In this way, by claiming someone else said or did it. The black man has a boring job of paying attention to every point the black woman spills. Any and all seemingly unrelated information may come back to haunt him in another variation. If she talks incessantly, it is a sign of nervousness and anxiety. She may be uncomfortable with silence. She debates her points with a fervor and adjusts the language craftily to salvage her own theories. If the black man is so presumptuous as to inform the black woman that she talks too much or that she should shut her mouth and listen sometimes, 
she becomes sullen, sullen and depressed. She will look for faults in the black man to criticize and, and get him back. She might poke out her lips or make her jaws tight. She resists any information that requires her to change her behavior. This resistance is, is nearly mechanical and kicks in whenever she is under attack. She relies totally on her feelings to make important decisions and arrive at correct conclusions. She will hold fast to the most stupid ideology just for the state sake of claiming, that's how I feel about it. If informed that her feelings are strictly emotional and have no bearing on reality, she fortifies her opposition and says, that is your opinion, and I got a right to mine. Unfortunately, this is not an act. She actually believes that her feelings are the truth. She will, she will refuse to consider any actual facts presented to her or anything else that conflicts with how she feels about something. Her feelings are her beliefs. And no matter how far-fetched from the truth of her position, she holds fast to it. The psychic scars of accepting deception based on her emotions are deep and lasting. She thinks that by agreeing with a black man, it puts her in a position to be subjugated. She is under enormous pressure to maintain her independent, separate, but equal identity. She views her difference of opinions as traits that make her unique and interesting. She cannot give in, she cannot give in on issues that require her to change her thinking. She continuously waves her banner of fear. She is deathly afraid of being taken over and being forced to concede. Often when the black woman learns something, completes a course, or even reads an article, she will attempt to sound wise. She enjoys the feeling she gets when she stumbles upon something she can wave in front of, his, uh, wave in front of the black man and claim she knows more about it. This is particularly true of the economically elite black woman. She believes her textbook knowledge enables her to be over the black man. The black man is not impressed with institutional education in the same way that she is. He would much rather hit the streets and learn things on his own rather than take time out of his freedom to memorize a slew of misinformation which he does not doesn't believe will help him daily some attend college others attend a life school of hard knocks and gain equal knowledge she will also try to ask him complicated questions so he will admit that he doesn't know the answer. She reveals in doing this. I'm sorry, she revels in doing this. She thinks that her big talk will impress the black man with, now, with how smart she is and will make him look up to her. No black man is proud of a black woman who uses her education as a dagger, stabbing him into admitting her superior intelligence. At the same time, no black man wants a dumb woman who is not striving to better herself. Knowledge and wisdom, wisdom is not always measured by book learning. The life experience and raising of consciousness is much more important to the black man because, of, because he is basically searching for a way to have peace. Dale. So when the black woman talks down to the black man, 
It is designed to make him feel small, uneducated, and fundamentally stupid. She thinks her knowledge and level of achievement means mean that the black man cannot tell her anything about anything. She knows better. Example of disrespectful language the black woman uses when speaking to the black man are as follows. Number one, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Number two, why don't you mind your own business? Number three, you are such a mama's boy. Number four, you ain't nothing and you ain't never going to be nothing. Number five, you don't tell me what to do. Number six, you do what you want to do and I'll do what I want to do. Number seven, get it yourself. Number eight, you think you're right all the time. Number nine, I get tired of you trying to tell me what to do. Number 10, why don't you act like a man? Number 11, you're full of sh- Number 12, that doesn't make any sense. Number 13, don't give it unless you can take it. Number 14, you didn't have nothing when I met you. Number 15, your family ain't sh- and you ain't either. Number 16, men are dogs. Number 17, I do what I want to do. Number 18, I might and I might not. Number 19, why don't you hush? Number 20, be quiet. Number 21, shut up. Number 22, you so stupid. Number 23, you can't do that. Number 24, leave me the F alone. Number 25, you mess up every time. Number 26, I go where I want to go. Number 27, it's my money and I spend it like I want to. Number 28, you get on my nerves. Number 29, it ain't your baby anyway. Number 30, I told you so. Number 31, my mother said you wasn't no good. I should have listened to her. Number 32, you'll know payback when you see it. Number 33, if you don't, somebody else will. Number 34, you can't do nothing. Number 35, stop. Number 36, get out of my face. Number 37, I don't want to hear that. Number 38, get out. Number 39, I don't care what you do. Number 40, I am, I'm tired of you. Of course, these are just a sampling. There are others which are more vicious and more degrading and some too filthy to list in print. It is safe to say that every black man in America has been told at least two of these statements in a relationship with his woman or his mother. Most have heard the majority of them. These remarks roll off the t- lips of, a, of the black female starting in elementary school, so they are well ingrained in her conversation by the time she is an adult. Rare is the black woman who does not allow the black woman to speak to him in, those, in these derogatory terms. No black man should should tolerate being spoken to like this. He must demand respect and deserve it according to his own standards of being a man. He must require respect or reject the black woman's woman from his circle of contact. When the black woman loves her black man enough to obey him and do what he tells her to do, she is looked upon by other more progressive black women as a fool. She is laughed at and pitied for letting her man control her and tell her what to do. 
if she stays home if she stays at home and waits for his call cooks him a special meal clean his house washes his car shines his shoes irons his clothes loans him her car lends or give him money run runs errands for him pick up after him let him lets him choose her clothes wash washes his hair feeds him rubs his back massages his feet or do does anything else to help him make to help him or make him feel comfortable she is considered a nut excuse me she is considered a nutcase and accused of spoiling the black man she is further charged with marking making it harder on the other black women who do not cater to their man in that way the righteous one, women is asked by the rebellious woman what is he doing for you while you're doing all this for him if the black woman just speaks to him in a civil tongue she is charged with being weak will black women pride themselves on being assertive parentheses aggressive and speaking what she thinks is, is, is her own mind. When the black woman talks badly to the black man, she is not speaking her own mind. She is speaking from the artificial mind she has adopted from Western civilization, America. This is something she learned first in slavery, then from teachers, politicians, the newspapers and television. The black woman has no history of speaking disrespectfully to the black man before she came to America. Disrespecting the black man is new to the black nation. It developed in slavery and post-slavery. It is odd that the black woman considers downgrading the black man as advancement in her own development of equality. The black man must not allow his woman or any woman to talk to him in a disrespectful tone or way. He does not deserve it and he does not have to take it. If to defend himself, the black man develops a feminine style of sparring with the black woman and tries to go blow for blow with her insults, bickering and name calling. The woman will tell her family and friends that he is just bitches all the time. She refers to his participation as bitching because she knows her kind of talk is indicative to the female gender only. She believes it to be a natural part of her nature and wants him to believe that too. He should not. If the black man loses his cool under pressure and responds by fling flinging a string of colorful metaphors, cuss words, at her, she complains that he talks to me like a dog. The fact that she is, one, she is the one acting like an animal never comes up. Sometimes the black man grows to respond to everything she says in a harsh rebuttal tone. He becomes accustomed to the rough talk and uses it as frequent, frequently as she. This is wrong. It only convinces the black woman that he can't handle her, so he has joined her. She will drag him under the earth if he allows it. When a black man fails, I'm sorry, when a black man falls for a black woman and begins to demonstrate that he loves her more than he loves himself, she recognizes that she recognizes this as a ripe stage for her to really let it rip. The more he professes his love, the worse she will treat him. The more he tries to give her, the more she will demand. And the more he tries to bed her down, the more she rejects his overtures. The harder he tries to please her, 
the more critical she is of, her, of his efforts. This is a perfect example that she does not know what to do when, when put in a position to rule the black man. When she is allowed to rule, she thinks the black man must be weak or crazy or both. She cannot handle it. She abuses him instead of progressively enjoying him more. And the time is not far off when she will be looking for another man. Sometimes the black woman speaks kindly to the black man or does nice things for him for the wrong reason. Sometimes her reason is just to make sure that he does not fall victim to the attentions of another woman. So she acts out the duties of being a good woman so her man can't use that as a reason to fool around. So she goes through the motions so she can never be charged with not holding up her end. Or so, so she thinks. But true caring and affection cannot be fake. If there is no love and good spirit is good spirit put into the care, it becomes dry and sterile, bland and mechanical. The black woman must be made to understand that the black man must first feel good about himself and that she should help the black man to feel good about himself when he is with her. That means that when the black man is happy with a black woman, it does not necessarily mean he is happy with her physical affection or exciting personality as much as with how she makes him feel about himself. He will reciprocate. When the black man is pleased with himself and feel, feels good about himself, his days are happy and he is radiant. He is eager to go off to work and eager to come home at night. In general, he is more productive. This is called satisfaction. Feeling good mentally, emotionally, and physically creates its own natural high an elevation to peace and freedom and confidence and courage. Anything can be accomplished. All of this is part of the black woman's responsibility to herself. The blessings she will receive for making her black man feel good about himself are unlimited. While she has her own ideas about what the black man should do to make her happy, she would much why she would she would be much wiser if she gave the black man a chance to express his ideas about what will make her happy a black man can look at his woman and decide what she needs black women have been known to treat the black man so badly and talk to him in such a destructive way that he becomes confused and angry and is literally driven to drink or use drugs she will prod him with her electrical shock tongue until she pushes him over the edge into some deep, dark cavern of despair. When she tells her friends about his condition, they all agree that he got what he deserves for letting her do it to him. It is their preconceived notion that if a black man resigns himself to obeying the black woman to the point of self-debasement, to obeying the black woman to the point of self de excuse me to of self de debasement he deserves whatever the hell awaits him this is a cruel and unusual punishment that he earns as a re reward for having the kind of overwhelming adoration of the black woman that she claims she wants she only wants it until she gets it and then she reverts to a destroyer. She will lead him into a trap by plotting to do everything she can to make him fall in love with her. She will make him feel better than he has ever felt in his entire life. At least she makes him think he does. She will make him totally dependent upon her affections and attentions. She will set him up for the fall. It's a game to her to see if she can make him or break him. 
As the game progresses, she steps up her plan to be debase him, and sometimes the change of tide is so powerful in his life that he cannot, he, that he can't concentrate enough to work, eat, sleep, or behave normally. She literally drives him crazy. He cannot live without her, and cannot live without her. The, the more love, the more pain, and she heaps it by the shovel full. This is, this is a dangerous game the black woman plays because sometimes if the man cannot handle it emotionally, he may decide to kill her. Sometimes he does. When he reaches his breaking point and becomes threatening, she scurries back in place and claims she doesn't know what's wrong with him. She accomplished these same deeds using jealousy, sex, or rebellion. While he explodes, she implodes. And she hates herself for not being able to control herself. Therefore, the black man should never allow his love for the black woman to surpass his love for himself. This is not being selfish. It is a raw necessity if he intends to survive his relationship with a black woman. He must never let her ego get out of control to the point where she becomes the main focus in the relationship. The black man must always be the main focus of the relationship. This does not mean that the black woman's needs should not be met, nor that she is unimportant, but she is number two, and the black man is number one. The black man being number one and the black woman being number two is another absolute law of nature. The black man was created first. He has seniority. And the black woman has, was created second. He is first. She is second. The black man is the beginning and all others come from him. Everyone on earth knows this except for the black woman. The only reason the black woman rejects the idea that the black man is first is because she does not, does not think that he deserves to be treated good. If examined... She does not really know the details of why she does not want him on top. All she knows is that she doesn't want him telling her what to do. She already knows that, try as she may, she cannot control the black man. Her frustration is that no matter how hard she tries, she cannot force the black man into or the orderly pattern mold she outlines for. The black man, even his disorganized state, cannot be controlled. He is not controllable. This, this is different from being out of control. This means he is in control of his, himself. Others who have tried to control him momentarily meet with the same frustration as the black woman. Failure. The black woman, like America, is afraid of anything she cannot, can't control. The black man, the black man's chromosomes, evidential, evidently, are pro programmed to rule and be in control. So he cannot submit to being controlled forever by inferior, unqualified beings. Why scientists around the globe know this? Infrequently, the black woman comes up with a good idea or renders some sensible advice to the black man. Whether or not he accepts it depends on how she brings it to him. If she does it as a non-insulting, respectful, the black man is able to hear her and take her comments under consideration. If she delivers, delivers the information in the wrong tone of voice, the man rejects it and her. He must be careful in accepting instructions or, or advice from the black woman because she is easily confused and will decide that he can't make it unless she tells him what to do. Making recommendations is her insidious way of gaining control in, the, in a relationship. 
If the black woman is sincere in her affections and is genuinely trying to help the black man, he will be able to accept what she says and implement into her into their lives for wide, wider success. Of course, when the black woman helps the black man develop and reach his desired potential, she experiences fear that he will outgrow her and leave her for another woman. She does not trust his motives. When, when he wants to expand, when he says, I'm doing this for us, she is not sure which, which us he is talking about. She may remind him about what she has helped him do and, and that he will not have been able to do it if it was not, were not for her. She is ever seeking opportunities to get the black man to bow down and worship her for being her wonderful self. When she accomplishes something free of ulterior motive, her man will recognize this and pile on the accolades. But if her idea is anything but clean, then he shouldn't get too excited. She has heard stories of women who help their men succeed and then leaves them. So she is afraid this will happen to her. If she behaves right and does not create any problems or become, oh, become combative, she will be well rewarded for her trust. She will be taken care of and loved, and her children will be fathered and become heir to the black man's accomplishments. This is how black legacies are made. Another reason the black woman fails in her confrontation with the black man is because she attempts to use the white woman's analysis and social priorities as her mentor regarding how she should get along with the black man. This is wrong. White American issues are completely different from black American issues. The white race understands the, the necessity for open forum discussions of their relationship problems. Blacks are sensitive about the defects in black life and fly into a tizzy at the mere mention of interpersonal problems indigenous to ex-slaves. This refusal to acknowledge the nitty-gritty problems have resulted in them being ignored and assumed unimportant. Even worse, it left the black woman and the black man to devise their own solutions. Blacks have no, have no published or scholastic analogies about how the black man and the black woman should get along. The inside story of life between black men and black women have been tiptoed around as if it were a time bomb. These problems exist and they are monumental. They hold the key to the black man and, and the black woman's personal success. A problem is only a question. Any problem can be broken into a mathematical equation to which, the, to which a formula is applied. If the formula is applied, the answer will be forthcoming. The answer is the solution. Blacks have not approached their problems from a mathematical standpoint and assume there are too many variables for similarities to exist. But there are similarities. The relationship problem, problems between black men and black women are only different in the, de, in the degree to which they are demonstrated. And blacks have never honestly and descriptively addressed these problems to the black nation as a whole. The truth about the depth and span of these problems is painful. This truth is also embarrassing and unwelcome for the public scrutiny. But the black man has been neg negligent in his duty to control the black woman. And the black woman has been 
scandalous in her public and private dealings with the black man and his, and his offspring. The time is past when the, this topic can be swept aside and replaced with other life priorities that are impossible to attain anyway until the root of this situation is addressed and remedied. Relationship standards have changed, but change does not always mean better. Sometimes it just means different or worse. Companionship between the black man and the black woman has turned into a living hell. Whether they live together or not, the hell has a pattern and affects the dwellers of every black household, and it must stop. The black man must communicate this to the black woman, and she must hear him with her ears and her heart. In referring to the black man, the black woman has an, an affinity to using terminology, my man, and she prefers to call the black man her boyfriend, my date, my honey, my friend, or my beau. She has a difficult time saying my man because she does not like the sound of power that goes with the word man. The word man makes her uncomfortable because it rings so superior and authoritative in her ears. As a consequence, black, black women in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s go around referring to the black man as a boyfriend. The black man is not a boy. He does not like being called a boy. It is, dis, it is a distasteful title he prefers not to answer to. The black woman, in her stubbornness, still calls him her boyfriend. She should refer to her as black mate, excuse me, she should refer to her black mate as her man, because that's what he is, a man. The language itself is euphoric. When the black woman speaks well of the black man, it is elevating to all who hear her, and it's contagious. It is contagious. Better yet, the black woman should try telling the black man good things about himself to his face, looking, looking him straight in the eye. She must learn a new talk. Dialogue filled with com complimentary words. The black man should be commend. Excuse me. The black man should commend the black woman when he sees her demonstrating an attempt to make a positive change in the way she, that she talks to him. At first, she will be very uncomfortable and uneasy and will feel out of kilter, but these feelings will subside as she relax. Prior to her giving in, she may try to use reverse psych and say, why should I do it? You don't, or you don't live, to, you don't live up to such and such yourself, or what are you going to change if I do all that? Or, look at what you do. These kind of flippant comments can be answered by telling her, I'm a black man, and I'm taking responsibility for my family and my nation. Responses like, because I'm the man and I am in charge. Or, because I'm the boss here. Or, Cause I'm the man and you're going you're gonna be like I want you to be or you ain't gonna be at all. Work just as well. Improvise. The black man should not be ashamed to admit that he does not have all the answers all at once. On examination, the black woman does not have all the answers either. She usually does not have any of the answers. 
She will be resistant against the man's ideas and have and not have anything to replace them with. She communicates most of her responses by saying the word no. When an unstoppable excuse me, when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object, friction ensues and they destruct. This does not apply to the black man. The black nation must implement across the board standards of home life that encompass every black person and every black family. The plan must be the same throughout in order to see unified progress. The result of not having a national formal plan useful to all the people is the confusing is the confusion and degradation we have today. The black woman's first change must be an oral one. She must learn her enough self-control to keep herself from talking to the black man like he ain't a nothing. Many times the black woman will refuse to cater to the black man because she claims he wants a mama or he has a mother complex. They make these charges because many black men want want consolation. They want to be consoled and there's nothing weak or lacking in them for wanting this. The black woman's job is to be a con consoler. Console means to give comfort, solace, and to make feel better, less sad. The job of the mother and the wife when it comes to the consolation is the same. It's not different or opposite. It is the same expression that should be shown to the black man and the black child no matter what age they are. Consoling is a female duty and one she is good at. Consol consolation and stroking are a necessary means of communication, just as the desire for acceptance and approval. Love and agreement. Giving consolation is not mothering or wifing. It is womaning. Womaning. Providing comfort to the nation instead of re ramshacking it. Black women withhold comfort for a variety of reasons and meter it out as they feel it is deserved. The black man who commits what the black woman considers a sin is not able to get consoled. Any failure that makes her feel disappointed is not rewarded with consolation. Of course, when the black man fails his greatest desire to be consoled instead of hearing, I told you it wouldn't work anyway. You should have known that it would you should have known that wouldn't work. Why don't you stop and just get a job? The black man is recover is a recovering slave and does not need a woman who is, who is constantly saying that he does not doesn't amount to much. He is something good. And if the black woman talks to him right supports him and consoles him he will heal and show the world how really great he is but since he is virtually alone abandoned and disregarded he does not always have the spirit to go to work he needs a purpose the black woman is unaware that this is the major continent where the black woman is out of control, where she has rejected her responsibilities and does not recognize the man as the head of the family. Again, the memory of the suffering of slavery takes its toll. Slavery was designed to disconnect the black man and the black woman. Today, we see long-term effects of this disconnection on American soil. Some black women 
are so removed from these types of historical roots that they blame all their problems on the, on the other victim of this racial conspiracy, the black man. They are more concerned with dressing jewelry, politics, sororities, church, public opinion, and job. It seems the black woman who boasts of holding the most prestigious job title is the most difficult to reach. The so-called successful black woman who earns a gargantuan paycheck believes believes she is the best with all of her bases loaded. She doesn't realize that her choices leave her own lonely and hostile and disliked by the saint by the group she longs to impress the most the bl black man oh she may say she is having more fun without a man than she had with one not true there is no such existence for the black woman she is not complete unless she has a man she is just a coward who does not want to deal with the black man on his terms. And she is at her wit's end to devise a scheme that will make him surrender to her. She has a boss complex and exaggerates her worth. She's cute. She's cute and necessarily and necessary, but she is not more valuable than the black man no one is the black woman deep inside her heart wants to surrender but she wants to be co coerced she wants to be con convinced according to her own barometer that her man really really loves her right now the only barometer she examines is whether or not her man is seeing another woman when she is unsure of herself and teetering on making an, a wrong decision about something she wants the black man to take charge of the situation and take responsibility for her it is very difficult for the black woman to have constant confidence in her own decisions because she knows she doesn't see the road too clearly she is unequipped to lead in that way, so, her, so in her life travels, she tries to look at everything at the same time instead of recognizing the clear path. Things look different according to the point of view they are seen by. Perception is the root of what the eyes see and the ears hear. If the black woman would just change her perception of what submission and surrender means, she could have peace. She cannot have this peace until the black man takes up the banner of charge, uh, excuse me, the banner of change. It is a massive undertaking that only the wise will survive. But only the wise will survive. Excuse me. Only the only. Excuse me. But only the wise will survive anyway. Those who can see no further than Gucci or Panasonic will not make it. Material gain will not, and has not solved the problems between the black man and the black woman. They only serve as a temporary distraction, and expensive. End of chapter 6.